Hey, what's up, guys? So I saw this funny clip a little while ago about Stephen Hawking and space travel, and it was just so utter nonsense. I thought I'd share it with you guys. So I put a couple other clips together to uh, show the real truth on what's going on with Stephen Hawking and how if anyone that looks into it is uh, clearly can tell it's a complete fraud. And uh, I saw a channel um, that was talking about how how he has lived so long and so many people watched it, so many people have thumbed it up and it just goes to show you how many people are unaware and deceived of what's going on um, and how they just don't look into anything, investigate it, even question it to really realize what the truth is and, and how it is. So that's another thing that kind of motivated me to make uh, to make this video. I mean, there's s just simple things like this even, this supposedly documentary, and he's not even eating. Look, at, as she puts the food into his mouth, all you can see is his glasses. They're zoomed right in on his glasses. That's not weird at all, you know? And then when you go and look back at it, you can see what she just did right now. She just shoves it up kind of to his nose and takes it back away. Look in his glasses, and you could see it right here. She just puts the food up to him and then brings it back down. Clearly seen in his glasses reflection. Things like this just really make you, once you kind of see it and realize it, uh, makes you really wonder how much is being deceived out there to you. You know, it almost becomes to the point where you can't believe anything unless you investigate it yourself and dig more into it because what you're told definitely is not true on a lot of means, a lot of aspects of things um, by this perfect example here. So take a look at a couple of these things and, and watch all the way through to see the space clip and uh, the stuff at the end because it gets pretty comical on how ridiculous and obvious this is. I mean, he's just straight up uh, disposable and, and then comes back the puppet to go directly to the agenda on what they want to be portrayed to the people. Stephen Hawking is so famous, you'd recognize his voice anywhere. But he also famously has ALS, which normally gives patients a very short time to live. So who is Stephen Hawking, and how is it that he has lived so long with this disorder? Hello world, Trace here with a non-synthesized voice for D News. Stephen Hawking is 74. You know him. He's published over 200 papers and books. IMDB has him appearing in 65 TV shows and movies as himself. Hawking is an intelligent and popular mind in science and pop culture, in part because of his outrageous and cerebral theories on how the universe works, and also that he does it all from a wheelchair with a computer synthesizer for his voice. But that's not really why he became such a big deal in science. In 1970, Hawking and his colleague Roger Penrose published a paper in the Proceedings of the Royal Society A, proposing a new theorem for describing the Big Bang and how the universe began as a singularity and will likely end as one. See, in 1970, the Big Bang theory was still debated, but because of this paper and others, it gained more credence. Right there, you see the key word? Big Bang. Got it to catch on. No better way to make up a story with someone that can't say anything back about it. Stephen was very lucky in being the right person in the right place at the right time. Science in some way uh, has become the new religion, that people are looking for ultimate truths, they had lost God and they were looking for something to replace God and they hit on cosmology and black holes in the universe and then they found a person who could represent the entire community of cosmology and, and astrophysics and so on to them. The world-renowned British physicist Stephen Hawking has made a prediction about humanity. According to the scientist, a human species will not last for another 1,000 years until it escapes Earth to inhabit some other planet in the universe. 
During the session, Hawking emphasized on how scientists should keep looking into the space for the future of humanity and that people should continue to show interest in space. I've been lucky. I've lived an extraordinary life, exploring the universe and attending the odd party or two. But imagine I could go anywhere and see anything. Well, in this bad boy, I can. Give me a break! Join me on a fantastical trip to my favorite places. After all, why should astronauts have all the fun? We've all seen computer animations of the Big Bang. The Big Explosion. The Flying Galaxies and the Nuss. But that's not right. It was far more elegant and strange. To see what really happened, I'm going to wind back time. As we go back, everything converges. From a black hole, to the Big Bang. Saturn. To Santa Barbara. Join. Oh, how ironic, flying right over a church. You on a fantastical journey to my favorite places. Only on Curiosity Stream. disabilities prevent Stephen Hawking from speaking a word, but he's risen above them to become a brilliant mathematician and teacher. Using a computer-driven voice synthesizer, he's told the world how the universe began, and now he's seeking the ultimate theory of how it works. Stephen Hawking, you use a mathematical concept that you call imaginary time, which seems to be able to run backwards as well as forwards. In our theories, there are two kinds of time. There is what is called real time. This is the kind of time that is measured by a clock. The time that we feel passing, the time in which we grow older. Then there is imaginary time. Of course, imaginary time is an idea that science fiction writers, like Arthur, have used in their stories. But imaginary time is also a well-defined mathematical concept. It can be thought of as a direction of time that is at right angles to ordinary, real time, in a certain sense. The universe has a beginning in real time, at the Big Bang. And it may well have an end, if it collapses to a big crunch. But in imaginary time, it has no beginning or end. Rather, imaginary time is closed in on itself, like the surface of the Earth. The surface of the Earth doesn't have any beginning or end. I know, because I have been round the world, and I didn't fall off. Oh, uh... <laughs> In the late 1970s, black holes were sexy. People latched onto Hawking as the guru who could explain the mysteries of the universe. You wouldn't see anything special if you passed inside the black hole. But once you pass a certain critical point, 
Then you'd never be able to get out again no matter how much rocket power you use. Hickory Dickory Dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The universe is huge. Yeah, I'd like to order number four with a large French fry and a Coke. And, uh, Stephen, what do you want? Okay, I'd like a Whopper with cheese. Hold the tomato. And a large Coke. What's that, Stephen? Oh, uh, easy on the ice, please.